guys and welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since my last history video and since it was St. Patrick's Day on the 17th of March I thought I'd do a little history and lore video on the man himself since he had an effect on the British Isles and especially Ireland. La Fe La Porig, which means the day of the festival of Patrick or St. Patrick's Day is a religious and cultural holiday held on the 17th of March which is the traditional death date of St. Patrick, the most important patron saint of Ireland. I have briefly mentioned Patrick before in another of my Irish videos, where he is quoted as having been said to have rejected sucking the nipples of kings and sailors. The St. Patrick was a 5th century Romano British Christian missionary and bishop in Ireland. Much of what is known about St. Patrick comes from the Declaration, which was allegedly written by Patrick himself. The dates of Patrick's life cannot be fixed with any certainty, but there is a general agreement that he was active as a missionary in Ireland during the 5th century. A recent biography on Patrick shows a late 4th century date for the saint is not impossible either. According to tradition, dating from the early Middle Ages, Patrick was the first bishop of Armagh, and primate of Ireland, and is credited with bringing Christianity to Ireland, converting a pagan society in the process. Patrick was born at the end of Roman rule in Britain. His birthplace is not known with any sort of great degree of certainty. Some places have it in what is now England, and uh, one place identified is Glenaventa, which is modern day Ravenglass in Cumbria. Another location is Burdeswold which is about 20 miles east of Carlisle on the Hadrian's Wall. There is a Roman town known as Banaventa in Northamptonshire, which is phenomenally similar to the Banavern Tannaburne mentioned in Patrick's Confession, but this is probably too far from the sea. There are some locations in present day Scotland as well, with the Catholic Encyclopedia stating that Patrick was born in Kilpatrick. Another claim is that he's from Glamorgan in South Wales, possibly the village of Banwen, um, which was near a location of a Roman marching camp. Patrick's father, Calpurnius, is described as a decurion, which was like a senator and tax collector of just some unspecified Romano-British city, and his grandfather, Potitus, was a deacon who was like a, a priest and he was listed as being this priest in Benavan Tebanea. However, Patrick's confession states that when he was young, he wasn't an active believer at all. According to the confession of St. Patrick, at the age of 16, he was captured by a group of Irish pirates from his family villa at Banavem Tebanea. They took him to the island where he was enslaved and held captive for six years. Patrick writes in the confession that the time he spent in captivity was critical to his spiritual development. He explains that the Lord had mercy on his youth and ignorance and afforded him the opportunity to be forgiven his sins and to grow in his faith through prayer. The Dalrata raiders who kidnapped him introduced him to the Irish culture that would define his life and reputation. While in captivity, he worked as a shepherd and strengthened his relationship with God through prayer eventually leading him to deepen his faith. After six years of captivity, he heard a voice telling him that he would soon go home and that his ship was ready. Fleeing his master, he travelled to a port 200 miles away where he found a ship and with difficulty persuaded the captain to take him. After three days sailing, they landed, presumably in Britain, and apparently all just left the ship. Walking for 28 days in a wilderness and becoming faint from hunger, Patrick's account of his escape from slavery and return home to Britain is recounted in his declaration. After Patrick prayed for sustenance, they encountered a herd of wild boar, since this was shortly after Patrick had urged them to put their faith in God. His prestige in the group was greatly increased. After various adventures, he returned home to his family, now in his early 20s, and then after returning home to Britain, Patrick continued to study Christianity. Patrick recounts that he had a vision a few years after returning home. I saw a man coming, as if it was from Ireland. His name was Victoricus, and he carried many letters, and he gave me one of them. I read the heading, The Voice of the Irish. As I began the letter, I imagined in that moment that I had heard the voice of those very people who were near the wood of Folklot. 
which were beside the western sea. And they cried out as if with one voice, We appeal to you, holy servant boy, to come and walk among us. Much of the declaration concerns charges made against Patrick by his fellow Christians at a trial. What these charges were, he doesn't actually say himself, but he writes that he returned the gifts which wealthy women gave him, did not accept payment for baptisms or for ordaining priests, and indeed paid for many gifts to kings and judges, and paid for the sons of chiefs to accompany him. It can be concluded from what he does write that he may have been accused of some sort of financial um, gain having obtained his bishop in Ireland with personal gain in mind. This trial and condemnation might have contributed to his decision to return to Ireland. According to Patrick's most recent biographer, Roy Fletchner, the Confessio is written in part as a defence against his detractors who did not believe that he was taken to Ireland as a slave, despite Patrick's like, insistence that he was kidnapped and taken there. Patrick eventually returned to Ireland of his own free will, probably settling in the west of the island, where in later life he became a bishop and ordained subordinate clerics. He writes that he baptised thousands of people, even planning to convert his slavers. He ordained priests to lead the new Christian communities, he converted wealthy women, some of whom become nuns just to annoy their families. He also dealt with the sons of kings, converting them as well. The Confessio is generally vague about the details of his work and how he actually did that, though it does give some really specific instances. This is partly because, as he says at points, he was writing for a local audience of Christians who already knew him and his work, so there was no need for him to go over it again. There are several mentions of travelling around the island and of sometimes difficult interactions with a ruling elite. He does claim of the Irish. Never before did they know of God except to serve idols and unclean things, but now they have become the people of the Lord and are called children of God. The sons and daughters of the leaders of the Irish are seen to be monks and virgins of Christ. Patrick's position as a foreigner in Ireland was not an easy one. His refusal to accept gifts from kings placed him outside of the normal ties of kinship, fosterage and affinity. Legally he was without protection and he says that he was on one occasion beaten, robbed of all he had and put in chains, perhaps waiting the execution. Patrick says that he also, many years later, became another captive again for 60 days, but doesn't go into any further details. Legend credits Patrick with teaching the Irish about the doctrine of the Holy Trinity by showing people the shamrock, a free leaf plant, using it to illustrate the Christian teaching of three persons in one God. In pagan Ireland, three was a significant number and the Irish had many triple deities, a fact that may have aided Patrick in his conversion efforts. The 17th of March, properly known as St. Patrick's Day, is believed to be his death day and is the day celebrated as his feast day. The day became a feast day in the Catholic Church due to the influence of the Waterford-born scholar Luke Wadding as a member of the Commission for the Reform of the Breviary in the early part of the 17th century. For most of Christianity's first thousand years, canonizations were done on the regional level. Relatively soon after the death of people considered very holy, the local church affirmed that they could be celebrated as saints. As a result, Patrick has never been formally canonized by a pope, which was pretty common before the 10th century. Nevertheless, various Christian churches declare that he is a saint in heaven and he is still widely venerated in Ireland and elsewhere today. Patrick is said to be buried at Down Cathedral in Downpatrick, County Down, alongside St. Bridget and St. Columba, although this has never been proven. There are many stories about Patrick and his exploits that were written much later after the man would have left this world, and I may cover them in a future video. But thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to share, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell and I will see you next time. Bye bye.